that would be really great if you people can uh, uh, turn on your uh, video so that as it's an interactive session, uh, there is a chance, you know, like uh, uh, to have very good interaction if uh, the people participants are visible in front of us. So as you all know, today's session is about uh, the 5 e model of teaching. Uh, we all are aware of different sorts of methods or pedagogical processes uh, wherein we take it uh, into the children, wherein we use uh, as to take the concept uh, into the students. So 5e model uh, is basically a type of inquiry-based pedagogical tool wherein you will be following certain steps as to take your concept among the uh, actually into the students. So today uh, uh, we are going to discuss briefly, not actually, as it is just a one hour session, we are going to briefly discuss about what the 5e plan is and the 5e method of teaching is. So let me share the screen. Uh, shall we go ahead, teachers? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. So the 5D model of teaching is an inquiry-based learning. Good evening, sir. Wherein we will, uh, very good evening, ma'am. Uh, wherein we will allow the students to actively indulge in the learning process. And in this process, what happens is teacher actually becomes the facilitator rather than a teacher. Uh, so it is also a method which emphasizes on making children individual learners. That is what is uh, 5e planning, uh, 5e method of teaching all about. So before getting into uh, the actual uh, uh, process that is involved uh, in 5e method of teaching, let us go into a little bit of history of uh, this model. So 5e inquiry-based instructional model is based upon cognitive psychology. So you all are aware of Bloom's taxonomy and cognitive psychology, if I'm not wrong. So as per Bo uh, Bloom's taxonomy's cognitive uh, uh, level, you have got six, uh, uh, six levels, as in remembering, understanding, analyzing, applying uh, to creative level. Uh, in this way, uh, this 5e model basically allows the students to slowly travel through the six levels of Bloom psycho, uh, uh, psycho you know, like cognitive, um, you know, like uh, a domain, and they reach the level of creativity. Uh, the 5e learning cycle, it is actually, uh, you know, like uh, used as a best practices in the STEM instruction method. Uh, and it's based upon a research. 5e model has been developed based upon a research. So here are the researchers. Uh, Bybee and Landis, who have mentioned about 5e model of teaching in a research paper which they have written in 1990. The 5e learning cycle leads students through five phases basically. There are five phases in 5e model of teaching, which is engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So, here hardly only at one phase, teacher has to do the hand holding for the children. In the other cases, it is that children are becoming independent and they are doing on their own. Teacher is becoming a facilitator. The 5e instructional model brings coherence uh, to different teaching strategies, provides connections among educational activities, and helps science teachers, especially uh, science in the sense it's not basically science, it is basically physical science, biological science, social science, okay, even language teachers can apply this in their classes. We'll discuss how we can do that. So they can make a decision about, in, uh, you know, interaction with the students. If you plan properly, okay, and you keep uh, your teaching learning material ready, 5e model of teaching will be the best pedagogical tool as to take up the concepts into the children uh, with a deep perspective. Compared to traditional teaching models, the 5e learning cycle results in greater benefits 
concerning students ability for scientific inquiry as uh, you know like uh, this model has been basically developed uh, by me for uh, science teachers we are i am you know like uh, emphasizing more on the words which are related to the subject but then every subject teacher okay can use this as to make the children individual and as to make them you know like uh, like promote scientific inquiry and scientific temper in the students so the first phase of uh, 5e model of teaching is engagement in this first phase of 5e learning cycle the teacher gauges students prior knowledge or identifies possible misconceptions this is as same as what we do in our regular teaching periods so in our regular teaching periods we go into the class and we try to check the previous or existing knowledge of the students isn't it the same way in 5e educational model or instructional model the teacher first goes into the classroom and he or she tries to test the existing or previous knowledge of the students and while we are doing this we have to use a proper you know tool for engagement you can use any sort of method either you can uh, go with a question answer method or you can go with a quiz method or you can go with a small assessment sort of uh, thing as to test the existing knowledge of the students in that particular concept for example if a physics teacher is going into the classroom and he or she wants to teach newton's laws of motions first you have to test how much of knowledge have children got in this newton's laws of motion okay and then uh, you will proceed with the next phase isn't it the same way here also in this first step which is called as engagement in 5e instructional method okay the teacher basically engages the students by testing the previous knowledge this student centered phase should create a desire to learn more about the forthcoming topic so it is the basic responsibility of the teacher as to make this phase the engagement phase more productive and when it becomes more productive is the teacher should create a sense of trigger among the students when you can create a sense of trigger is you should you should actually know what children have learned and come to your uh, the present grade why when you will know this is you have to carry out a research on what children have learned in the prior classes as a teacher who teaches in 7th grade i always tell in most of my sessions that if a teacher is teaching in 7th grade she should be knowing what concepts have been taught to the children in 6th 5th 4th 3rd and 2nd grades then only you can actually trigger the knowledge of the children child develops interest towards the concept or subject only when uh, they uh, they feel that teacher is ready to listen uh, to what i know teacher is asking what i know then the child gets motivated so it is our you know basic responsibility as to create a uh, you know trigger among the children so that children will get motivated towards more uh, learning of the concept which we are going to teach in the classroom the engagement phase is not intended for the teacher to lecture define terms or provide explanation so we have to remember this a lot my screen i request all the participants to please mute yourself i am using and now inside of this so here the teacher is not supposed to provide any explanation the whole and sole purpose of going with an engagement phase is to know what your children know so this is the first step in the 5e instructional model the second uh, so here you have a picture as in what you can do as a part of engagement uh, in the class before starting your lesson so mentally engage students with a question or activity you can also excuse give a picture me, yes ma'am excuse me sir sir could you please kindly share the previous screen sir i didn't copy the third point sir ma'am actually we are uh, you know like we have very less time so yes. 
No, sir, because while I was typing the distraction in the line for that reason only, sir. Yeah. I missed that. You thing. can just notice thank small, you, small you. points. Yeah. So, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, here are certain activities which we can do during this engagement uh, phase. And they are as uh, follows. Like, uh, question uh, and answer activity. Like, you can ask certain questions from the previous chapters. Uh, you can also go with picture observation. You can, you know, like uh, paste a picture on your board or if you have digital boards, you can, uh, you know, like go with the picture which actually helps as a fundamental thing, uh, you know, a fundamental tool for the teacher to build upon the chapter. You can show a picture and ask questions from that picture. You can also show certain video clips wherein they create an awareness which tells the importance of that particular topic which you are going to teach. And small demonstrations, kinesthetic activities wherein children are engaging themselves using their body. So always we have to remember kinesthetic activities are really important because every class have got a uh, set of children uh, who are uh, you know kinesthetically intelligent. They are always ready to do something using their limbs. Okay, so we have to make sure that we also engage such, such sort of children using kinesthetic activities. And then, um, yeah. So let me go with uh, the next phase, which is called as exploration. Uh, under exploration, uh, this phase basically provides students with, uh, you know, common base of hands-on activity. For exploration, you have to make sure that the child is finding the concept interesting. When a child finds concept interesting is when you are conducting a hands-on activity. And this hands-on activity can be anything. It need not be literally holding an apparatus of your science lab. It's not like that. Even if you give a worksheet, it even becomes a hands-on activity. Or if you asking the children to, you know, draw something, you know, integration of art, even that becomes an hands-on activity. So hands-on activities, you find lots of sources for hands-on activity on uh, internet and on YouTube, which you can, uh, you know, like use for your particular subjects. So to make exploration more interesting for the children, you have to always go with hands-on activities. These activities will help students use prior knowledge to inquire generate new ideas and conduct a preliminary investigation. So investigation is also a very good tool as in the among the eight skills which CBSE is, you know, like stressing upon investigation and inquiry is also one thing. So when investigation and inquiry skills are generated in the children or when they are, you know, like, uh, you know, like when they are, uh, you know, like uh, try to inculcate uh, in the children, uh, what happens is they, you know, they have this uh, sort of tendency to find out the reason behind everything. Most of that is called as scientific temper also. Children will develop a tendency to know the reason be uh, behind every natural or artificial changes, whatever it is. So this has to be encouraged. And for that, we have to do hands-on activity. When children touch, they actually learn. So children learn while doing, isn't it? This phase of learning cycle usually incorporate the main inquiry-based experience which nurtures students' understanding. Always remember, inquiry has a great significance on learning. When, for example, we as teachers, we have learned more, okay, you know, after becoming uh, teachers, isn't it? We have learned more after becoming teachers. Uh, as students, I don't think most of us, we have actually tried to master what we are learning. After becoming teachers only, we tried to master each and every concept, maybe as a math teacher or maybe as a science teacher or maybe as a uh, any teacher, isn't it? Uh, especially grammar. When you have to teach children grammar topics, you have to do lots of research work on it, isn't it? So uh, inquiry basically nurtures the understanding among the children. So exploration is a phase wherein we give chance for the children to explore what they are about to learn in that particular chapter. 
So that was the second phase of 5e learning model. So there are certain uh, set of activities which you can consider uh, while you are doing exploration based activities in the classrooms. So students carry out hands-on activity to make sense of a concept. You can ask a test, uh, testable question, you know, wherein you can uh, test the knowledge of the children, conduct research and form a hypothesis. You can ask the children to conduct research, even observation based, uh, you know, like activities will be really good. Uh, for example, for science teachers and chemistry teachers, you can bring to solutions, you know, add things to those solutions and ask them, like, what did you observe? Okay, while this experiment was going on. So observation based, uh, what do we say, like activities, they have a very good effect on the students uh, during this exploration phase. Test the hypothesis and gather data. You uh, Gathering data is also one of the best activity which children can do uh, with regard to exploration. Analyze and interpret the data. Analyzing and interpreting are also there. Analyzing is there in Bloom's taxonomy also. You know, analyzing has a very good uh, effect on cognitive, uh, you know, domain of the uh, Bloom's taxonomy because the child is actually trying to understand what it is, what, are, what is the reason behind everything that is happening. So it is a very good, uh, you know, like activity which you can do. Draw conclusion and communicate results. So these are a set of things which you can do in your classroom during this exploration phase. Now we are getting into the third phase, which is explanation, wherein a bit of hand holding. I can say literally 70% uh, of hand holding will be done by the teacher in this. This third stage in the instructional model is more teacher directed and guided by the student's experience in the previous phase. Now, what happens is when we are using a content book, as in a textbook, if we are going with the unit method of teaching, as in, you know, following what is the content given in the textbook, you know, the chances of exploration or the chances of knowing more are less. Isn't it? So that's the reason explanation comes into the third stage of 5e model. Already as children have tried to gather lots of data in the second phase of instruction, here there are chances for children to come up with lots of doubts, wherein the teacher should be ready. Now, as you have guided the students during the exploration phase, okay, now you have chance to give knowledge, not only that is suggested in the textbook, but also knowledge which is more and which is advantageous for the children also. Always more knowledge is good, isn't it? So this is completely based upon the previous phase, that is exploration phase. Now you know where your children are lying, okay? Where the phase of exploration has brought your children up to. So now you have chance to get into the hearts of your children actually, okay? You can really touch their hearts by giving your 100%. So uh, that's the reason explanation has come exactly amidst the 5e model of instruction. Students explain their understanding of concepts and the teacher corrects the students' misconceptions. Certain times it so happens that children develop misconceptions uh, during their research. So these days when we say research, the only uh, you know, tool or only medium available for the children is Google. So when they are using Google, what happens is there are many sites which, you know, like which may not give proper information or the accurate information to, to the students. At that point of time, what happens is child develops lots of mis misconceptions in his or her mind. So during explanation phase, it's the responsibility of the teacher, you know, to completely uh, wash this, wash away this uh, misconceptions of the students and give the necessary and needed knowledge with regard to the concept to the children. During this phase, the teacher may provide formal definitions, notes, and labels. As in, you know, basically, at times, there is some literature also needed in, uh, you know, like uh, teaching subjects. 
and this literature comes in the form of definitions you know some notes which is very much important and you know uh, running notes or question answers not question answers during this phase we are actually discussing about only the basic running notes of the concept which the teacher gives especially in the higher grades like 9 10th 11th and 12th so teacher can use this phase of explanation to conduct all such sort of uh, you know basic teaching learning uh, activities so teachers hope you are all following until now we are done with three uh, you know phases of 5v model of instruction so few uh, you know like activities which you can take up during this process of explanation is you can uh, you know like explain the concepts and the skills which are associated with the concept apart from that you can use vocabulary you know every subject has got its own terminology like uh, you come across lots of terms you know which are very much new to the children in science social and mathematics so you can uh, use this explanation phase as to create awareness uh, among the students about the vocabulary that is related to your particular concept and you know you can also present or demonstrate the concept to the children uh, using a ppt or taking them to the concerned lab and you know you can use a textbook also your content book actually and you can discuss what all are given in the textbook in that particular lesson and uh, in the case of english you can go with leveled readers okay wherein uh, you know you give different sorts of books or you uh, you give uh, you know different sorts of uh, you know like uh, novels or story books for the children as to know more about that particular concept every language comes with a moral in every story isn't it or something an anecdote from the writer's life so you can give books related to that so that children will also try to know more about that particular lesson or that particular author articles we can also share certain articles with the children uh, about that particular concept and uh, you know wherein children develop interest towards the concept until here teachers are you all okay do you have any doubts in this three phases do you have anything to ask you can raise your hand or else you can unmute yourself and you can ask okay i suppose there are uh, there is no doubt so this is the third phase of the 5v model of instruction and now we are going to the next phase which is the fourth phase and this is a very interesting phase both for the teacher as well as the student and this is called as elaboration wherein uh, we elaborate upon the uh, knowledge which the, which the child has gained now in the first phase we have been testing the underlying underlying knowledge of the child in the second phase we have facilitated the child as to carry on some research work and gain more knowledge on himself or herself about the concept that we are going to teach and the third step was explanation after the child has come up with some knowledge we are actually giving what the child needs isn't it uh, what the uh, what is the necessity of that particular concept that is being taught in that particular grade learning outcomes associated with that on basis of this we are actually getting into the minds of the children now elaboration is used to build upon all these three things in elaboration phase students are encouraged to apply their new understanding of concepts while reinforcing new skills like it is in the case of bloom's taxonomy also that uh, children are encouraged to apply their knowledge applying is also one step in the bloom's cognitive domain isn't it so here we have to go on with activities or go we have to give tasks to the students wherein they can apply the knowledge you know we cannot apply knowledge if we don't have uh, you know the necessary theoretical as well as a practical understanding about the concept isn't it so we have to always motivate the children uh, whatever subject it is it can be social it can be science it can be uh, mathematics or it can be languages okay we always should encourage the children 
uh, as to apply the knowledge which they have acquired on themselves and which they have, you know, like uh, taken from the teachers also. Then what happens is the chances of remembering the concept is more. Apart from that, it also makes the child understand uh, how they can, uh, you know, use it in day-to-day -day life. If not in day-to-day -day life, at certain points of time in their life. According to Duran and Duran, students may conduct additional investigations, develop products, share information and ideas, or apply their knowledge and skills, uh, skills to other disciplines. So, as I said earlier, here the children are, you know, using their knowledge to apply it in their day-to-day -day life or the problems that arise in their life or the things which they come across in their, uh, you know, life. So, it's a very, you know, like a, a critical, you know, we have to create a level of uh, critical and creative thinking for the children. Then only they can apply the knowledge that have they have learned uh, you know, in a very positive way. This stage in the learning cycle presents opportunities for the teachers to integrate science with other content areas. So here, why, when we are saying even NCF for school education is emphasizing a lot on interdisciplinary integration, which means every subject has to be integrated with the other subject. So every subject has a science around it. Isn't it? Every subject has a science around it. We have something called as language sciences also. So languages are also treated as a part of science in that particular study. So what happens is uh, here there is a chance for the teacher as to integrate uh, a particular science subject or social subject with the other subjects. So that was the fourth phase. Uh, which we are calling as elaboration and certain activities that are suggested to the teachers during this phase is to uh, conduct a debate and also is to, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like develop a passion based learning. When passion develops, when did we develop a passion for teaching? Because we have done teaching in our childhood, isn't it? We have done pure teaching or uh, we have done teaching in some or the other way and we have realized that, you know, like uh, there is a teacher in me. So this passion has to be developed uh, among the children for basic learning purpose. Then uh, it will be very fruitful. And, you know, you can also conduct lab experiments which are really good for elaborating. Every concept that you have taught in your classroom, if you can take the children to the lab, especially, you know, science uh, teachers and uh, these days mathematics labs uh, also we find. If we can take the children to the lab and if we actually provide a situation wherein they are experiencing what they have learned, that would be fruitful for the teachers, uh, you know, uh, in understanding, uh, you know, in making the children understand the concept in a more better way. And uh, they have to be aware of what are the scientific things that are happening around with regard to that subject. These days we have many newspapers which, uh, you know, like uh, schools are getting for the students. Every day we are giving newspapers to the children. There, there are many columns, science column, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, things associated with mathematics, columns associated with social sciences, uh, columns associated with uh, general articles, awareness articles and stuff. So we have to provide, uh, you know, like, uh, mediums for the students as to uh, understand, uh, you know, basically uh, understand what is happening around them in a real life situation that is related to this particular uh, concept. Uh, also, we should create an awareness about uh, career. For example, if you are teaching something from geography, I am just exemplifying. Uh, most of the children don't know what career opportunities are there around them if they're opting geography as a, uh, you know, subject. I'm talking this in the perspective of a high school teacher. Okay. From grade six onwards, there is a dilemma in the children as in what I should become. Most of the children, uh, most of the people, they don't become what they say. But most of the children, they tend to be in a confused state as to say what they want to do in their life. Isn't it? So it is the mini uh, responsibility of the teacher 
uh, I believe uh, from the you know perspective of a teacher uh, because uh, it is the responsibility of the teacher has to create an awareness what create career opportunities you have how beautiful your career as uh, that person uh, would be like for example if you're opting geography you can either become uh, a person archaeologist if you're becoming an archaeologist you know what opportunities you are going to have as an archaeologist how you can travel around the world how you can you know uh, you know do something that you have developed passion since your childhood for isn't it so in this way if the teacher gives a glimpse of what you can do in future by learning this particular concept it will be really wonderful uh, and uh, students will really uh, you know um, take it to their heart and they develop a passion towards the subject that they are learning that is how we can uh, make passionate students in the present especially the children of this era they are very you know like uh, they want to know everything and uh, you know like uh, with a scientific uh, reason behind it so for such sort of students when you you know show them actually what are the fruits that they are going to get it will be really uh, you know like useful and we will be successful as teachers also The final stage is evaluation stage. Uh, this evaluation phase encourages uh, students to assess their understanding and abilities and provides opportunities for teachers to evaluate student progress uh, towards achieving the educational objectives. Remember that objectives and outcomes are two pillars uh, for teaching. Uh, most of the teachers are confused between objectives and outcomes. Uh, certain times uh, it so happens that the objectives and outcomes doesn't meet. So as a teacher, we should be having lots of clarity within our mind. As in, why am I teaching this concept to a child who is in this particular grade? So what is the necessity of teaching French Revolution to the children in ninth grade? The teacher should know the objective. The teacher is not aware about the importance and significance of a concept. How do we expect the children of that age of 11, I mean 12, 13 or 14 years to sit there and understand the topic? Only when we create, uh, you know, a sense of, uh, you know, significance, understanding the significance of the concept, then only children will develop, a, a, you know, like sense of responsibility towards learning or sense of interest towards learning. That is the role of a facilitator. So, and we have to do that on a daily basis. For every concept, we have to discuss the objectives. You may not discuss directly to the children, but you can definitely tell what is the significance of learning that particular chapter or learning that particular concept. Then children will understand, okay, it's so important for me to learn this particular chapter or concept. Now I have to sit with it and I have to learn. Then your objectives are achieved your objectives turn into learning outcomes. Always, if the teacher the teacher wants to teach that lesson for something and the child is learning something else, then there is, a no, there is no match in between that. The child should learn definitely what the teacher wants to teach. Yeah, he can also explore more and he can learn more. In that way, teacher can, you know, like, uh, uh, like teacher can calculate what extra will the child learn on his or her own. Okay? And you can use this particular stage for evaluation also. So you have uh, done engagement. You have known how much the child knows. You have done uh, exploration, wherein you have facilitated the child with uh, carrying out some uh, you know, data handling. And then uh, we have gone with explanation, wherein you have taught them what you actually want to teach. And then we have done elaboration, wherein you have tested the knowledge of the children. Now, here... Uh, in this phase, evaluation phase, you will evaluate whether the child has learned what you wanted to teach him or not. Okay? It is very important to evaluate the knowledge of the children. Remember, assessment takes place in three phases. We have discussed this in our earlier webinar, I mean earlier sessions also, that there is assessment, you know, before starting the concept, there is assessment that happens throughout the concept and assessment that happens after teaching that particular concept also. This is very much important. At every point of the instructional period, okay, 
we should assess the children at every point of time we should know whether the children have followed it or not then only a teacher can conclude the uh, you know concept properly and if you are not concluding the concept properly then uh, what happens is the children will not get a uh, link between what they are learning. So evaluation and when evaluation happens is after the assessment. So you have tested the knowledge of the children and now it's time for you to judge, basically judge whether the knowledge which the child is applying okay, during the inter, uh, instructional phase is apt or not. That is very important. You have to carry, you have to do the judgment over there. Evaluation is nothing but basically judging whether the child has got appropriate knowledge of the concept or not. Uh, here there are certain, uh, you know, traditional forms of assessment that are appropriate for evaluating students' understanding and performance. It's like portfolios, performance-based assessment, concept maps, physical models, and journal logs. So what I suggest is go with some activity like mind mapping or, you know, like uh, going on with a, uh, what do we say, like uh, uh, comic strips sort of stuff as to because uh, we are emphasizing on integrating art also these days, isn't it? So these things will help the teachers a lot and also generates interest in the children. Like always a return test, you know, children get bored of. So if you go with concept mapping, mind mapping, mind mapping, classification chart and stuff, children will develop interest towards assessments also. So that is about evaluation. So these are the five phases of, uh, you know, 5E model teaching. So the, these are the five E's of instructional phase in this particular model. Here are certain, uh, you know, things that you can do as a part of evaluation. Ask them to review and reflect on their learning. What I have learned, what I have learned, okay. How is that useful for me? Self assessment. Also, peer assessment can be done. Let the child assess himself or herself. Performance based assessments also can be taken. Like you can give a pen paper test. A portfolio of student work, as in during the activities, the activities which are done by the children, you are converting them into portfolio. It's a very different topic. Uh, uh, if we get time, we will definitely do, uh, do work on portfolio also. And uh, reasoning and uh, stuff sort of things like you can give certain case studies and ask the children to give the reasons. So these things you can uh, do during the evaluation. And definitely after evaluation, we have to give the feedback. And after giving the feedback, if the teacher understands that somewhere there is a, you know, like in a class of 40 children, if uh, 10 children are not understanding one particular subtopic which you have taught during your lesson, it means that your, met, uh, you know, like methodology or pedagogy hasn't worked there. And that is the time for the teacher to reteach the concept. It's very much important. We have to work on it because of the changes that is happening in the curriculum or changes that is happening in the instructional, uh, you know, like uh, method or uh, the, the, the expectations of the children also certain, certain times are not met with regard to certain concepts. They don't understand. It is our responsibility that we get into their shoes and make them understand what the concept is. Okay, so here we have uh, tried to uh, come up with, uh, uh, you know, like different activities which can be done with regard to different disciplines. And a 5E model plan uh, for science is in this way. As a part of engaging, you can show a video or image of volcano erupting and ask students what they know about volcanoes and how they think these volcanoes are formed. You can, during the exploration phase, you can ask the students work in small groups to conduct experiments or research on how volcanoes form, provide resources such as books, articles and websites for them to use. Explain, have the teacher provide a brief overview of the process of volcanic eruption and how it is related to uh, plate tectonics. Elaborate, uh, have students create a presentation on what they learned about volcanoes and present it to the class. Evaluate, have students complete a quiz or assessment on the concepts covered in the 
lesson. So this is a basic. So we have taken a, a like a book called as uh, what do we say Frank's Primary Science. Uh, in which uh, within the science topic, most of you might be confusing how come volcanoes have come into science. In that particular book, there was a small topic about volcanoes. So here to create this particular 5 e model plan, we have chosen that. So in this way, during these five phases, you can conduct these activities. Okay, so that they become interesting for the uh, children. Five e model plan for, I'm sorry. Five e model plan for mathematics. Show a video or image of a real life application of geometry. Here we are taking geometry because it's more easier to take into the children, such as a building being constructed. Ask students what they know about geometry and how it is used in the real world. Under uh, exploration, have students work in small groups to solve geometrical problems using manipulatives or online tools. Manipulatives, there is a difference between a teaching aid uh, uh, and uh, teacher's resource and uh, manipulative. Okay, manipulatives are basically used only in mathematics exclusively, wherein they use certain tools for learning the concepts. For example, if you are using matchsticks, okay, you are placing five matchsticks on a table and asking the child to, uh, you know, like uh, minus three matchsticks. Then this matchsticks which the child is using is called as a manipulative. Manipulatives are basically the objects or tools which are used by the children during the teaching learning process. Okay. So you can give them certain manipulatives or you can give them the geometry uh, related uh, tools which are present in your math lab and you can ask them to carry on with uh, solving certain geometry problems during exploration phase. And coming to explanation, uh, the teacher can provide a brief overview on different types of uh, geometric shapes and their properties. We have many geometric shapes in mathematics. Few people, any math teacher sitting here might be knowing better than me. Okay. Uh, so you can uh, explain about those properties, those theorems and stuff, wherein actually you are giving the knowledge from the textbook as well, which is needed for them. Elaboration. You can have students create a presentation on real life application of geometry and present it to the class. So in the face of elaboration, what is happening is, uh, you know, the child is not after the stage of application in the stage of uh, in this particular stage, the child is also doing peer teaching. Basically, he's sharing his knowledge with the children. We shouldn't forget this. This is a very great link wherein the child is sharing his knowledge with the children. And it's an opportunity for the teacher to correct all the children in that particular presentation that happens. Evaluation, you can have a quiz or an assessment, uh, you know, uh, as to test the knowledge of the children in that, that particular concept. So 5e model plan for English. Uh, basically, you can consider it as a plan for all the languages, not just English. Show a video or image of a famous speech or poem and ask students what they notice about the language that is being used. Uh, the second phase, have students work in small groups to analyze the language and structure of the speech or poem. Okay, uh, so structure is very important in language. That's the reason we are using this uh, in exploration. Uh, during the explanation part, uh, the teacher can provide a brief overview on the literary devices that are being used in speech or poem and how they contribute to the overall meaning. For example, if they are, we are going with language and literature, most of the CBSC schools, uh, they go with language and literature, paper code number 184 uh, for English. Communicative English is very less chosen uh, subject. Uh, so what happens is here we have to emphasize upon the uh, nature of the writing of the writer and what literary devices he is using, he or she is using as to make his writing uh, more, uh, you know, like uh, look good. Elaboration, have students create a presentation on famous speech or poem and present it to the uh, class. Evaluate, have students complete a quiz or assessment on the concept covered in the lesson. 
it's not just quiz or assessment as i told you you can go with mind mapping you can go with concept mapping you can go with uh, brain uh, not brainstorming you can go with uh, what do we say a questionnaire uh, you can go with the classification chart you can go with uh, some art integration it asks the children to draw different uh, uh, scenes that have happened in the story okay so that what happens is the child will try to put the things that he has learned on the paper so though we have a very, uh, we have got very less time which is uh, just uh, one hour i'm just trying to show this uh, lesson plan because for any pedagogy uh, planning is very much important so here is a basic uh, lesson plan structure for 5e uh, planning uh, here you can go with it's given as pupil teacher but you can write it as uh, name of the teacher date and class and topic they are very common in any plan your school and name of the subject what are the key concepts of that particular lesson and then learning objectives why you are uh, you know like uh, teaching i mean uh, what is the necessity of the child to learn that particular concept in his or uh, you know his life and then teaching learning aids you can uh, like we have discussed in the case of mathematics if you want to take certain things into the classroom wherein the children will touch them and they will do something you can mention here like teaching learning uh, aids and stuff and then we have given all the three stages roles of the teacher during this stage what will the teacher do basically and what are you expecting the child to do so in this way we have given uh, the plan for all the five stages and then uh, let us come to the conclusion the 5e instructional model serves as a flexible learning cycle that assists curriculum developers and classroom teachers with lessons that illustrate constructivism, reform-based best teaching practices. 5B plan is a best teaching practice. The thing which we have done, you know, it's a very practical-based model, 5B model, uh, wherein when we have done it in our school, what we have done is we have sat with the teachers. Uh, you know, like uh, we have something called as a departmental meeting that happens before every uh, you know like uh, every academic year and we decide upon the pedagogy like what type of pedagogy uh, teachers can choose for these lessons uh, like the coordinators sit with the teachers the HOD sit with the teachers and all the lessons which they are going to teach in the next academic year they are kept in front and they will sit and they will discuss with the other teachers they also give inputs Okay, like if you are going with this lesson, you know, like you can go with, in this way, what we do is we choose all the 5e based chapters, which chapters can be done using 5e model. I'm not telling that for every chapter, this is applicable, but most of the chapters can be included. Once if we start doing them, we get more ideas. But as per today's strategy, which NCF uh, is demanding the teachers to, you know, like incorporate, 5B model plan is going to work out well because we are actually becoming facilitators rather than that old rot learning method. Okay. So, you know, like uh, it becomes a constructive approach uh, is being used here. So it's very, uh, you know, good if we can actually uh, use this method in the classrooms. The International Journal on New Trends in Education and Their Implication found the 5E learning cycle model positively affect students' achievement and the performance, sorry, uh, permanence of the knowledge. As we said, in three stages, especially the stage, the second stage of exploration, uh, the fourth stage of, uh, what do we say, elaboration, and the fifth stage of evaluation, what is happening is the child is getting a chance, okay, to do things on his own, and as this is happening three times, the child is applying the knowledge three times. First, uh, in the face of uh, exploration, he is trying to gain the knowledge. Second, in the case of elaboration, he is trying to tell the, uh, his peers what he has learned. And in the fourth stage, evaluation, literally a test or whatever, in whichever form the assessment is going on, what is happening is, as he is applying and using his knowledge again and again, uh, it helps the child to remember, okay, the things what he has learned. That's the reason here we are using the word permanence of the knowledge. So that was all about 
uh, 5e model of teaching now let me learn uh, le i mean let me know if you people have any doubts with regard to this particular uh, model of uh, you know like teaching that would be really great if you come up with questions No one has questions. Uh, no, sir. Actually, I would like to thank you. It was very nice session. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Mm, the pattern yes, that sir. we will be using same like IE learning. Okay. Which you made it and made us understand. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so please try to use it, ma'am. <laughs> try yes, to sir. plan, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I wanted to know how do we integrate this learning with the other subject? Are we taking the help of the subject teachers? Of course. Are we, we helping the children with the understanding? Uh, no, no, no. We have to sit with the teachers, basically. Uh, in a departmental meeting, you can decide as in what subjects you want to integrate. For example, if you want to uh, integrate science into English, so you have to pick okay. the common chapters. Okay. okay. And then uh, you can discuss with that particular teacher. Just uh, let me know how you can, uh, you know, cover your English topics or how you can, how you can okay. bring your science topic into this. And then okay. you have to integrate. Okay. Good Thank evening, you, sir. sir. Yes, ma'am. I want, uh, uh, sir, I, will you please uh, correlate with the subject like accountancy in three E's? Five E's, sir? Accountancy. Uh, yes, Ma'am, when it comes to the subjects uh, of accountancy and all, uh, basically what happens is their knowledge giving is more. Accountancy is a you know new concept for the children because they are not doing it in ninth and tenth grades. Am yes. I right? They are yes. learning it directly in the eleventh grade, isn't yeah. it? So yes. there, uh, if you observe in eleventh grade, uh, only the foundations and basics, like I can say the A B C D of accountancy is given to the children, if I'm not wrong. Yes, you can, sir, you are absolutely isn't right. Isn't it? In so 11th they, standard. Yeah. In 11th standard, we are just teaching the A, B, C, D to the children of accountancy. So less chances uh, of applying 5E model is there. Okay. 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 You can, okay. Uh, you, you have to, if, otherwise I have to carry on a research now because uh, we have never done it for accountancy and stuff. We yeah, have done with only uh, science, social related subjects. Accountancy is a completely new topic. Now. Children just learn the ABCD in 11th grade. So we cannot uh, make children completely independent. And uh, okay. there you have uh, many things. It is also like mathematics wherein we apply yes, the things. Sir. Isn't it? So, yes. yeah. So only that will work out there. Not 5E, I suppose. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. But if there is any theory... Like uh, like business economics, if they are having business economics or if they are learning some theory about accountancy. That has and all, a practical implication, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that this will be uh, useful. But literally, if you're teaching balance sheet and stuff, then uh, no, <laughs> it is formula based only, I should say. Process based. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, anyone else who would like to ask a question with regard to this? Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, how we can implement this uh, 5e to the kindergarten, sir? Because the children are learning everything will be lagging. Uh, we have to give more importance for them to concentrate more upon it now. How we can implement Very good, ma'am. Uh, very good. So, which uh, 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 can you just give me the subjects? For example, in kindergarten also, we have EVS, we have English and stuff, isn't it? So they are also yes, you literacy, know, numeracy, numeracy like that. They will be having. Yeah, they'll be having literacy and numeracy, right? So in kindergarten, yes. basically the thing is that they'll be doing everything uh, on their own. We are using lots of uh, gross and fine motor skills for the children in kindergarten, isn't it? Uh, so what happens is uh, you have to come down to their level. For example, if you are doing. Uh, for example, if you're starting with engaging, you're teaching English in kindergarten. And if you're starting with engaging, you can ask the children. If you're in PP1, you can ask the children. Come on, children, sing me the song of alphabets. The children who know, they will be singing. Okay. Yes. And uh, coming down to 
you know like uh, exploration wherein children have to explore on their own okay they they already know one or two words isn't it okay so you can yes, put sir. a word wall on your uh, blackboard okay and you can ask the children to pick the words which are starting with a or starting with b or uh, that particular letter which you are teaching them okay at least they know yes, that it is being started here isn't it and yes. then you can yes, explain whatever you are teaching and then uh, you can ask the children anyhow uh, we will do lots of emphasis on music based learning like rhymes and stuff in pp yes. isn't it there you can ask yes, every sir. child to come and perform in front of the class and you can ask every child to tell use the board uh, use the board or use uh, the flash cards or use puppets and all yes, and you can ask the children to tell their friends share their knowledge with their friends you can do it ma'am it's not at all a sure. but the thing is that you have to come down to their level thank That's you sir thank you for the hearing yeah anyone else sir good evening sir yes sir sir uh, how can we use uh, five five is for life skill classes oh life skill uh, life skills and all it is really very interactive sir it will be really interactive if you can use uh, uh 5e uh, so just you have to sir i mean you have to know how you can take the children onto the track re re related to that particular concept can you tell me any one concept that is uh, uh, there in your life skills i mean your subject um for example how how do you uh, value yourself how do we value ourselves ah okay so you can ask the children about their interests what they like isn't it sir uh, uh, what they like uh, so you can start engaging like that and when coming uh, to exploration uh, you can ask the children to uh, think or brainstorm uh, on what they love doing okay i love doing this i love doing that apart from themselves you can also ask them as it's a life skill subject okay you can ask them to think about what their family members like what their peers like isn't it sir after that this comes their exploration and in the part of explanation you can tell the children how important to for an individual to understand his own strengths his own weaknesses and how he has to uh you know like uh, what to be say give time for himself and he has to stay motivated throughout his uh, you know like journey of life and then when it comes to uh, what to be say the fourth step where in elaboration the children can actually sit and they can discuss about their interests with each other and they can also choose people in their classroom okay who have common interests they can come together and have clubs like reading clubs dance clubs music clubs and in case of life skills it's uh, the scope of using 5e model is really vast sir and finally evaluation as a life skill teacher you know what you want to teach the children through this lesson okay isn't it so you will evaluate you will ask questions you will give them case studies in this case what will you do as an individual isn't it right, right. so in the case of five uh, you know like life skills and what to be say value education gk 5e model is really excellent if there are any gk teachers who are teaching gk here okay 5e is an excellent model of pedagogy the people who think gk is a dry subject we have to just you know like uh, cook the children with uh, you know by giving the answers 5e model will really work out in fact we have a separate session uh for gk and 5e model yeah thank you sir thank you very much sir how yes. many periods are required to complete this 5e model depends upon the concept ma'am i cannot exactly give you a number of periods it depends upon the concept which you are choosing and uh, how you are planning the whole flow of the chapter where you want which uh, which particular sub topic of the chapter you want children to explore where you think you have to give explanation so it's a very huge session you know this is just a glimpse of 5e model for the teachers to think about it okay for the teachers who feel uh, motivated about yes this is a good plan i have to work more on it 
for them then we'll be having a you know like a session wherein actually our sessions are really interactive which happen for 3 hours wherein we sit with the textbooks and we do things yeah so can you share recording of the session with us uh, i'll try to i'll try to do so ma'am yeah thank you so much sir thank you yeah. anyone else Anyone else, teachers? Uh, do you have any uh, doubt you can ask? No one has a doubt. Are we good to wind up? Yeah, if anyone is willing to give a feedback about the session, that will be really great. Sir, how to give feedback, sir? How to give Please. feedback? Vo verbally, sir, you can just say how... What you felt could have uh, that's I thought of filling maybe filling form. Yeah, yeah. Way. I have a form also. I'll be sharing it in the chat box. Just a second. Give me so give for me certificate time. purpose, uh, payment mode. Actually, I have a problem with UPA services. Okay. Uh, because of some technical issue, I blocked it. Uh, okay. And uh, how to make the payment? I didn't get, sir. Shall I uh, make the payment through phone pay from my sister? A bank account, I'll share the receipt, sir. Is it okay? Uh, sir, actually, uh, you will be getting a link in the, uh, what do we say, like... Uh, yes, yes, I saw, this... sir, but uh, my UPS... The... Okay. Uh, Can I go? I'll send the to your number, sir. Previously, I did like that, no? No, Can I have to like... check with uh, Matthew, sir, if that is possible. Or else, uh, you can share the link with your uh, sister. Yeah, she can do uh -huh. the payment link through her phone. She can do it, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. But yeah. filling should be done by me, no, sir? I didn't get not. It. I have to fill the rest of the... Yeah, details. you can give her the thing. Na? First, you open. Open it and see what details are to be filled there. You write it on a paper and send a pic to your sister. Put on a sheet. Yeah. Okay. For certificate, no, sir. Uh, only thing is, if you do it through your that is sister... Just she has to fill your name, your phone number, exactly, and just part of it. So the certificate will come to her mail or your mail. If she has filled your email ID, it will come on your email ID certificate directly. Exactly. So my details know? should be filled by her. Yes. Uh -huh. You send the link to her. She will uh, do the Google page. She will insert that 